Hello and welcome to another video. In this video, we're going to be talking about the CISA exam. I've recently just passed the CISA exam um, by Osaka, um, and I'm going to be sharing with you the study techniques I used, my approach to taking the exam, um, what I did to retain the information. I've got a little bit of a secret technique that I used to study. Not really secret, but I have not literally studied or took any exams formally anyway in about seven or eight years. So it was very hard for me to initially get back into learning. Well, learning how to learn was a first step before actually starting to learn because I'd completely forgot how to prepare for an exam. Um, I didn't know what to do. Um, so yeah, I don't have a degree. Um, I haven't got much experience in IT. I've been working in IT probably about a year and a half, um, just kind of fixing computers, bit of IT support, um, but nothing extensive and when I say fixing I mean like upgrading just installing a new operating system in maybe replacing the hard drive or the SSD or the RAM or whatever um, so none of that really applies to this exam might help slightly with some things but it's not really related to auditing per such so um, it's not a technical exam anyway this is IT auditing and initially when I first started preparing for the exam i had no idea that um it regulations existed to this extent anyway i knew banks like had regulations because when you're working with money and accounts you know they get audited they get looked at but if you're just building software i honestly thought they could sit at home code the software um or whatever create something and just sell it or let someone use it and they pay you monthly um, software as a service or whatever. Um, I honestly thought that was just all it was. It was just a simple process. You didn't have to do anything else. And that just kind of shows how ignorant I was and how little knowledge I had of auditing and compliance in general. Um, so yeah, it's not that simple. Like when you're if you're selling to example for to a UK hospital, your software or your service has to be HIPAA compliant. You need to have backups. You need to have like data mirroring in some instances. Like if you just had one primary production kind of like environment and that fell over, that knocked down, system failure, whatever, um, and a doctor was about to operate, but he needed to look at the patient records, he could chop off the wrong, wrong leg, he could issue the wrong medication, he could kill someone because your system wasn't secure enough or didn't have a backup plan. So these regulations basically ensure that whatever field uh, you're in, that your software or your service is compliant with the regulations of those fields. So IT, sorry, the CSA exam, will not be specific and teach you all the different regulations that exist. It just gives you an overview of what auditing is like, some of the basic principles that apply. So it's a very good entry level exam to get into IT auditing. Um, and IT auditing um, and security and compliance is a very lucrative career it pays very well. Like in the UK, you can expect up to about 150K a year. In the US, it can be even more than that. In Western countries, it's very good in general. Obviously, you'll start off on the lower end. You might start off, you know, 30, 40, 50K and slowly climb your way up with the more experience you get and the more certs, but it is a very good career to get into. So this exam will definitely help with that. So, um, just a little bit about what the exam is like. Now, there's 150 questions, it's all multiple choice. Um, so you've got four options. And if you pick the wrong one, you won't get marked down. So you can guess, but I wouldn't suggest that. Prepare very well, you won't have to guess. Um, and it's a four hour exam. You have a lot of time. Honestly, I finished like an hour and a half early and just spent the time reading through, just making sure, you know, I picked the right stuff. Then about 10 minutes left, I got bored of just reading over again and again. I just thought, I'm going to end the exam. And I passed, so it worked very well. The CSU exam is split up into five different domains. Um, the first domain is the IS auditing process, information system auditing process. Just goes over the 
general kind of auditing process and a few other things. The second domain is governance and management of IT. The third domain is information system acquisition, development and implementation. The fourth domain is, is information system operations and business resilience. And the fifth domain is the protection of information assets. So both of the five domains are weighted a bit differently. Um, I think it's about 14% to about 26 or 27%, depending on what domain you're in. But yeah, you need to have a basic understanding of all the kind of concepts in there. Um, so yeah, and I'm just gonna talk about a few different ways you can prepare. So first thing you need to make sure is you buy the official ISACA resources. I emphasize official because I actually bought the wrong one. Um, and as you can see by a couple of whatever little uh, page, whatever sticky notes, tabs, I actually studied this whole book, which has uh, just over 600 pages. And I went through this like it was for the proper exam. This is for the 2016 version and is actually created by Wiley. So I went to the Wiley website and this is the most up-to-date book they had um, because Wiley did not create a version of the book for the 2019 exam. So I went to the website and I thought, oh yeah, this is the most up-to-date version they have. This must be the right one, it must be the 2016 version. I didn't think it's 2021, they haven't updated the exam in five years, seems a bit odd, but never mind. I'll just go through it, auditing can't change that much, but it did a little bit. But luckily, about 80% of the content in this book is the same as this one. The weightings change, some things are more emphasised and you need to know more about that than that kind of thing. But generally, it's very similar, So, but I still suggest you get the official book. There is also the Q&A book, the question and answer book, which has like a thousand questions, um, the answers, um, why the answer is right. So I do suggest you get that as well. I have got a copy of that book as well. So I suggest you get this book, the CSA 27th edition review manual, and you also get the Q&A book. Um, and yeah, doing that, working through the books, you'll definitely pass. So now, um, how do you actually get through the books? It's a lot of content. It's a bit like a reference guide, a bit like a dictionary sometimes, you know, it's hard to digest that kind of content, especially for someone like me, I've got a low attention spam, I can't concentrate for very long at all. Um, and also, um, like I said earlier, I've not studied formally in a while. Um, and just looking through the book cover to cover is just so tedious and it takes so long to do. And it just doesn't register. Like I remember reading through the book, like kind of cover to cover and nothing went in. Like literally the first time that was this book. I read through it cover to cover. And I mean, I picked up one or two things, but considering I'd read 600 pages, I should have remembered more, but that didn't work. My memory wasn't that good. So I kind of looked online and I was trying to find the best method to actually retain information and learn things. So what I ended up doing was I found this really good study method and I'm gonna share that with you now. So there's five different steps to this and it's important you do them in this order. There's a reason for this, which I'll explain towards the end. Um, but what you essentially do the first time is you pick a chapter, let's say, or you pick 20 pages, 30 pages, or part A of a chapter, because some of the chapters are split to part A, part B. Let's say today I'm gonna to study part A of domain one. So you look at the kind of, you start off on page one of part A, and what you do is you just flip through each page, looking at the page, but not reading anything. So looking at each page, looking at the structure, where the pictures are, where the diagrams are, where the illustrations are, how the words are structured, where the titles are, where the bullet point points are. Not in a lot of detail, remember, you're not reading anything, you're just looking at the structure of the text, the structure of the book, just the way it's laid out, what it looks like. 
So you do that and then you get to the end. When you get to the end, you flip back to the beginning. Now you're back at the beginning, what you do is you read through it. Well, you start that again, but this time you're only going to read the titles and the subheadings. Do not read anything else, flip through the whole part A or whatever amount you've dedicated to learn and read through just the titles and the subheadings. So do that slowly and this will give you an idea of where things are, what the topics are about, but you won't delve into the information just yet. Um, and this is a very important step now. When you get to the end, don't turn back to the beginning, read the summary. Read the whole summary of the part A or the chapter. Um, once you've read the summary, look at the questions that are asked at the end. At the end of each domain, at the end of each part, there's normally some questions. Questions will ask you about that bit that you've just learned. So read the questions, but don't look at the answers. Just read the questions, just so that you know what they're asking of you. Um, now, once you've done that, you go back to the beginning and you read through it again, but this time you're reading the titles, the subheadings, and the first and last sentence of each section. So each kind of paragraph or area or topic or whatever, read the first and last sentence. Some sentences are short, it will just be one sentence or whatever. If it's bullet points, you don't need to read them all, just read the bits around them. But what you essentially want to do is get an outline or a very quick overview or insight into that topic. Um, so let's say it's data analytics, just read the first sentence of the description of what it says and the last sentence. Often the first sentence describes the thing and introduces it and the last sentence would just summarize it. So doing that you've got already you've got a summary and a basic understanding of that. Um, just like an insight into it but you won't completely understand it. Um, you do that all the way through to the end and then this is the last step when you get to the end go back to the beginning and read the whole book again but this time take notes go through it slowly and make sure you read the bits in between um now the reason you might think oh how can this work because a lot of people will just do the last step which is they'll open a book they'll go through it cover to cover they'll take notes they'll be careful but that can work but i wouldn't suggest it because doing the four steps prior where you're flicking through you're reading the titles you're reading the summaries the questions first and last sentence etc you're essentially mapping out the content you're mapping out what is there what it looks like where the pages are you're reading the summary and the questions to get an understanding of the what it kind of is asking of you at the end what you should have understood. If you're looking at the summary, it will give you an outline of what you should have understood from that, what you should have took. And then looking at the questions will give you a strong indication of what is going to be asked. So when you are reading through it for the last time, you're reading through it and you're like, oh yeah, they're gonna ask about this. And you'll go through that bit because you know you know it's going to be asked about it was also on the summary so i need to understand this so doing this method will kind of enable you to prioritize what you should be learning and what is more important in those areas in that chapter in that part and whatever so using this method I do not see why you will not be able to pass. Honestly, it worked for me. And just remember, I had no auditing experience, not barely any IT experience compared to a lot of other people. Um, and I still managed to pass. Um, this method really did help me and I hope it can help you too. So um, thank you for watching. Um, and I've also written a blog about this. So if you want to read about what I've just talked about in a little bit of detail, then go for it. I'll link that in the description. I will also link the CISA official resources in the description so you don't end up buying an out-of-date book um, like I did and make that mistake and have to delay your exam because you're an idiot and you didn't check that it was the latest version. But never mind, I um, hope this video has helped you and uh, yeah, enjoy the rest of your day.